G'day guys, welcome back. My name is Wildcard. Yes, everybody knows my favorite team in the world is the Melbourne Rebels. And boy, did I wish that the Rebels were playing out there tonight instead of these two. My goodness. The Rebels did better, a more exciting, more adventurous game of rugby in 30 minutes last night than both his teams combined over the entire 80 minutes. Man, it was raining out there, and I, I guess the players thought that they're playing in Wales with the roof open, right, in a test match or something, right? Both of them went out there trying to kick three points, milk penalties, and boy, the kicking game, oh, 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 the kicking game worthy of Warren Gatlin, right? Worthy of the spring box. Oh my goodness, was tantalizing to watch, and my goodness. And then eventually, uh, despite the overabundance of talent that was out there for the Waratahs, the Brumbies just suddenly realized, hey, <laughs> uh, the Waratahs don't seem to know how to play rugby at all, and we could just run them over. And that's literally what happened. The Brumbies literally ran over Waratahs players like little boys and just ran away with the game in the second half. I'm not joking. It's pretty, it's that bad. Oh my God. Uh, so yeah, let's talk about some positives from the Brumbies. I thought Noah Lodosio showed a bit more, uh, what do you call it? A bit more physicality and aggression in this game. He's been criticized by many pundits, not just me, that for not showing aggression, not taking the game by the reins, so to speak. I thought he showed a bit more aggression tonight, which I was pretty happy. He got into the midst of things a little bit, got a bit more physical in some of the breakdowns. And uh, yeah, I, was, I thought it was uh, as, you know, definitely uh, you know, moving towards the right direction as a prospect number 10 for the War Wallabies. The kicking game as well for the Brumbies was much better than the Waratahs. I don't know why the Waratahs was even kicking because the Br Brumbies were just like, the, for the first half, the Brumbies were just like camped inside the Waratahs half because the incredibly horrendous kicking game from the Waratahs, why do you even kick the ball away? Like it just gave me the ball back for the, for the Brumbies for another, another shot. Like scoring a try, it was absolutely one-sided for the most part when it comes to that. Second half, the rank uh, uh, stopped and it was just like, the Brumbies just like, well, let's just run the ball and see what happens. And the Waratahs were falling left and right. Ironically, the tackle, missed tackle count was much higher for the Brumbies than the Waratahs for some reason. So I'm guessing, uh, like I said, it's not a missed tackle if you don't attempt it in the first place. So yeah, that was... Uh, Pretty much just what happened for the Brumbies, just running through. Uh, Robert Valentini literally ran over Tan Edman like a schoolboy for a try. And uh, that was pretty, pretty good. And out of that, for the Waratahs, man, I really don't know what to say. I guess Joseph Swali's $6 million import will come in next season. And that's going to fix everything for the Waratahs on the wing, right? I mean, pfft, <laughs> oh, oh, having, a, having a $6 million winger is definitely going to turn this pile of fucking chicken shit around. But hey, I can't wait. I can't wait to watch that. And, you know, the, the Waratahs, outside of that, after Lockie Swinton with his new blonde head, uh, I mean, Lockie Swinton has been looking quite good in recent times. Lots of physicality. And, but yeah, the overall cohesion of the team, it just didn't look like anybody was playing a leadership role in the Waratahs team. There was so much talent out there and everybody was just kind of like doing their own thing. Uh, there was, like, the off-flow game was pretty much non-existent. And the, the set piece, the structure of everything was just, yeah. Really looked like, it looked almost like a barbarian team out there, to be honest. Like, players really haven't played with each other, I guess. Look like they haven't played with each other in that long enough. And they're just kind of, like, going with the flow. Trying to figure out what, people, what each other wanted to do. Live during the match sort of thing. And, uh, yeah, it was very abysmal. Especially... You know, the, the decision to take three points after being camped inside their own half for like a good part of the entire first half of the game. Waratah said, you know, fuck playing rugby. Let's just kick three points and uh and see the what and see and see the scoreboard ticked up off the zero mark, and we're pretty happy about it. So yeah, pretty, pretty abysmal. Anyway, let's look at some of the match stats of the game. Uh, 387 run meters for the Brumbies to 371. 13 turnovers conceded against the Brumbies, 16 against the Waratahs. Here's something I, th I thought very surprising. The Brumbies actually missed 30% of their tackles. 30 tackles missed out of 96. 
whereas the Bortas actually look like they played a test match. 129 tackles made only 15 missed tackles. Despite that, like I said, you know, sometimes it's not a miss. It's not a missed tackle if you don't even attempt it to make a tackle, right? So yeah, that's uh, something to think about. Uh, the kicking game, 32 to 28. It was a lot worse in the first half. The uh, like it was a little bit rainy, and both teams just were not interested at all to playing with the with the ball in their hands. And the lineouts were a bit, bit of a mess for both teams as well. The Brumbies lost five lineouts, and Waratahs lost four. Oh man, like that is, you know, uh, how, I mean, the Brumbies used to have one of the best lineouts in Australian side, if not, if not one of the best, the best lineouts in the uh, Australian sides now losing five lineouts against the, uh, the, uh, the Waratahs. I thought Jet Halloway did really well for, in terms of sporting that lineout for the, for, against the Brumbies. So I guess that's one of the positives out of the Waratahs. Uh, Jet Halloway's performance in the lineouts uh, was really able to do a lot of damage, uh, including the more defense as well. The scrummaging was, I thought it was okay. Angus Bell came up with a potential injury, so hopefully it's going to be okay because uh, Angus Bell is going to be one of the very important player going forward for the uh, for the Wallabies um, in that regards. Penalty count night for both teams. Uh, not too bad, but... Um, Again, very little, you know, there were too much kicking involved. The very little opportunities were there to give out penalties, I guess. Anyway, let's have a look at some of the moments of the game. I mean, there really isn't too much to talk about. The first half, right? Eight minutes into the game. Brumby, uh, sorry, two minutes into the game. Waratahs had a penalty. Immediately, they're like, oh, let's take three points. I mean, the game just started. <laughs> I mean, you mean if you kick three points every two minutes, we're gonna win this game by eighty points or something, right? Whatever, you know, two minutes, four, forty penalty goals, and you know, you yeah, yeah, eighty points. We'll score. Yeah, and actually, if you kick a penalty every two minutes, uh, you're gonna be, you know, hundred and twenty points. We're gonna win this game by hundred and twenty points. That's what the Waratahs had in mind, I guess. And then uh, immediately, they found themselves. In trouble, under a bit of pressure. Uh, eight minutes in, Brumbies had their own penalty, kicked that one from Lolasio, and then the game kind of just stalled a little, a lot. Lots of kicking game. The rain went bucketing down, and it took about thirty minutes for the Brumbies to get another penalty. A lot of seal kicked another one, six points to three, and then finally, just before half time, the Brumbies like, uh, maybe we should try play a bit of rugby and see what happens, <laughs> and then immediately scored. Yes. Uh, Brumbies scored 30, what is it, 38 minutes into the game. Sorry, Brumbies actually kicked out a penalty before this. Um, 33 minutes, so it's 9 points to 3. And then Waratahs had another penalty that got the score back, got back up from, to 9 points to 6. And then right from the kickoff, the, uh, yeah, the Waratahs couldn't exit. Scrum, dropped the ball, scrum to the Brumbies. And the ball just came out. Literally, Brumbies spread the ball out wide, Dylan Peach. Uh, what happened? The, um, um, oh yeah, so, um, yeah, immediately the exit, the exit failed. What happened here? I'm a little bit lost. The, uh, so yeah, the, the Brumbies kicked the ball out for the line out. They, no, 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 sorry, sorry. So the, um, the Brumbies actually did a really nice kick down the field and Dylan Peach was had was caught in like without any space right against his own like about five meters out from his own try line and he basically like scooped the ball out of the bounds. He like slided out with the ball essentially. So the Brumbies had the five meter line out and then they just went line out, didn't even do really do the more, spread the ball, crash, crash, try time. Uh Goddard went in for the first try for the Brumbies just before half time. Something the scoreboard ticked up to what was it? 15 points to... 16 points to... Was it 16 points? or 16 points to 6. And then second half, 9 minutes into the game, Tom Wright, again, showing a bit of a... Just, just that quality. It looked too easy. He had the ball, kind of went into the tackle, stayed on his feet. Nice little offload to Rob Valentini. And then he runs in. Rammed over. Uh, Tien Edmund. Try. Like a little schoolboy. 49 minutes into the game. Uh, the Brumbies... 
went up two tries. Well, what's the score here? 20, uh, 23 points to nine. Yeah, 56 minutes in the game, not a penalty to the Brumbies, not a three points taken. Again, I guess don't want to play rugby. 26 points to, to nine at this point. 65 minutes into the game. Finally, the Waratahs got something on the board. They had a penalty. They went for the more. And this time, the more was... It kind of like rolled into the corner. Try time for the Waratahs. 26 points to 16. 67 minutes into the game. Like, I guess, uh, this is where I was getting at. Right from the kickoff, Waratahs failed to, to exit properly. Dropped, dropped with the ball. And then Brumbies had a scrum center field. They just spread ball out to one side. Uh, Corey Tool just went straight through. Like, nobody even touched him. A massive gas symptom to feel. Like I said, if you don't make the, if you don't attempt the tackle, it's not actually a missed tackle. And he went in. 33 points to 16. And finally, 79 minutes into the game, the Brumbies went. Uh oh, I think this was another. I think there was might be another set piece. But just nicely, the, the ball, they were they were attacking on the left hand side of the field. The ball just got spread all the way back to the right hand side. Everybody in the back line touched the ball, just draw and pass, draw and pass, draw and pass. Nice and smooth. And then Charlie Kale went into the corner. 40 points to 16. Ticked the scoreboard up. Uh, finally, the Waratahs had one last shot to score a try. They finally decided to play some rugby. Built really close to the try line. And then, what's his name? Dylan Peach crashed over. And that was Kale up. No try. And that's how the game ended. 40 points to 16. And, yeah. I don't know what else to say. Um, the way that some of these teams in Australian rugby play is just... Quite embarrassing, to be honest. You're constantly trying to milk penalties and kick three points. You know, it, it, it's it's you, you talk about changing all these laws and make the game more exciting. How about just tell your players to stop trying to milk penalties and kick three points? It's just that simple. That's the easiest way to bring the fans back. You don't have to, yeah, you don't have to change the law and make sure that the line out that's not straight is um, not no longer a penalty. So that you, so that the hooker is not embarrassed on national TV, right? I mean, I mean, let us let's be fair. It's 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 really comical to think that changing the law it's gonna make a difference when you have teams with so much talent on the field, uh, like stacked with wallabies, to just go out and play absolute abysmal rugby. Um, yeah, and I still can't believe that the Rebels played better than both teams combined yesterday. And uh, boy. Anyway, let me know your thoughts about this game, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. And uh, see you guys next week for the news. And cheers.